You're going to die and you better not to say something stupid for your last words. Because people remember last words. Regardless of authenticity, they seem to fascinate us by capturing our need for closure and our desire for immortality. In this video, we explore the story behind those words spoken at the border between this world and the next by these historical figures. These are Socrates' mysterious last words according to Phaedo, which is a play written by this guy, Plato. In this play, Socrates was trialed by the Athenian court on charges of impiety and corrupting the youth. How do you plead? Uh, I am not guilty. Okay, all in favor of executing Socrates, raise your hand. All not in favor of executing Socrates, raise your hand. Mm, not you, Socrates, you can lay down your hand. Oh, so close. Not really. Socrates was sentenced to death and imprisoned in this jail. Here he had a conversation with his friends before death. Socrates spoke hopefully about the afterlife, warning his friends not to worry about death and explaining why they should even look forward to it. You're serious? Yes, look forward to it. Then just before he drank the hemlock, Socrates said to his friend and disciple, Credo, I owe a rooster to Asclepius. Will you remember to pay the debt? What does that mean? And who's Asclepius? Quiet. Asclepius was the ancient Greek god of medicine. Look at the snake entwined around his staff. Familiar, huh? Doctors love to use it as their logo. Anyhow, Asclepius was the ancient Greek god of healing. So Socrates' last words, perhaps at the literal level, meant that Socrates, or probably one of his sons, had recently been sick and he owed a sacrifice to the healing god because of his recovery. But surely more is meant at a non-literal level. According to Socrates' philosophy, life is a sickness, a kind of blindness that obscures the vision of the truth. Socrates was about to die, but for him, death was not something evil. It was a cure for this sickness. Therefore, he offered a sacrifice to the healing god. This would be a supreme gesture by Socrates, who throughout the discussion described in the Phaedo tried to persuade his friends of the immortality of the human soul. With these words, he would now be driving home to the point that death is not something to be feared, but rather to be looked forward to. Alexander succeeded his father Philip II to the throne in 336 BCE at the age of 20 and spent most of his ruling years conducting a lengthy military campaign throughout Western Asia and Egypt. He was undefeated in battle and is widely considered to be history's greatest and most successful military commander. After bringing together one of the largest empires in history, stretching from Greece to northwestern India, Alexander the Great lies dying at a young age. His loyal followers assemble at his deathbed and beg him to reveal who will succeed him. Will it be Perdiccas, the loyal bodyguard who Alexander left his ring to? Roxana, Alexander's wife who bears his unborn child? Antipater, the man he left behind to govern Macedonia? His most capable warriors, Craterus, Antigonus or Ptolemy, or her mother Olympias? Who he will leave the empire to? Alexander's answer was simple. To the strongest. With these last words, indeed, they all started fighting about who the strongest was. The empire soon dissolves into a ruthless battle for the throne. A battle that would determine the course of history for centuries to come. By the way, nobody knows what caused Alexander's death, but the greatest military commander of all time most likely died by this. Born in Vienna, Austria in 1755, Marie Antoinette married when she was just 15 years old with this guy, the future French king Louis XVI. Marie was the last queen of France before the French Revolution. 
as French revolutionaries accused her of being profligate, promiscuous, and treasonous, she became increasingly unpopular among the people. And no wonder, people were outraged to hear that when the queen was told that starving French peasants lacked any bread to eat, she callously stated, let them eat cake. What a bitch. She was the symbol of what was wrong with the old regime in France, and France was going through a revolution. In 1793, nine months after the execution of the former king, Louis XVI, a revolutionary tribunal tried the former queen on crimes against the French Republic. The jury found the former queen guilty and condemned her to death by guillotine. In her way to execution, she maintained her composure, despite the insults of the jeering crowd. As she ascended the stairs to the guillotine, she accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot. Marie Antoinette's last words were an apology to her executioner for stepping on his toes. Pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. It seems that she was a terribly polite woman. She was, and she was actually very active in helping the poor. However, for the revolutionaries that wasn't important. For them, she was the perfect scapegoat. A foreigner born to the enemy, a woman in a position of power and too much visibility with not enough voice. She was hated for simply being who she was, a queen. And the French no longer wanted a queen. And about let them eat cake, it was just a rumor to make her look terribly out of touch and privileged. And of course she was out of touch and privileged, but not to that extent. The phrase first emerges with Jean-Jacques Rousseau in a book he wrote in 1765 when Marie Antoinette was still a nine-year-old in Austria. Karl Marx is among the philosophers whose ideologies have brought in gigantic changes around the world. While shortly after his death, his thoughts and the ideology of Marxism built foundations for future communist leaders such as Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin, he remained a relatively unknown figure in his own lifetime. Who are you? Karl Marx. Who? You know what? I don't care. We'll see. Born in 1818 in Germany, studied law and philosophy at the universities of Bonn and Berlin. Due to his political publications, Marx became stateless and lived in exile in London for the last 34 years of his life, where he continued to develop his ideas in collaboration with his friend and patron Friedrich Engels. Following the death of his wife and his eldest daughter, Marx developed a disease that kept him in ill health for the last 15 months of his life. It eventually brought on bronchitis and pleurisy. While he was on his deathbed, his housekeeper asked if he had a final message. And this was shouted by the German philosopher before his death. Go on, get out. Last words are for fools who haven't said enough. <coughs> Maybe he was right. If you have written and spoken your mind in your life, you don't need quotable last words. Last words are just like other words, but words are important. Using them you can explain thoughts and ideas, manifest your true self and change the world. <laughs>